We're going to go off and we're going to meet Craig and, and okay. Megan Bell. What is your relationship here? Well, Craig here is my father. I'm Megan. Um, that's our relationship. <laughs> Strictly, yeah. <laughs> I think we learn from each other a lot. That's true. And we, we have different tastes in music, of course. <laughs> we learn from each other, we do. Um, and it goes both ways. And influenced a little bit by each other. And uh, it's a good friendship. At uh, our age, it's nice to have a, uh, a, such a relationship between father and daughter, I think. I, I didn't go to art school. Um, I didn't you know, study art or anything. So what I read, I just kind of take in and, and it's a very small bit that I learned, but at least it's something. I see Megan um, doing things that I did 20 years ago, <laughs> because I learned. I learned on my own primarily. I learned. I started reading uh, biographies of the artists from the library, and I used to do all my drawings and paintings. My drawings they were very small. And it wasn't until I started going to the museums and realized these were reduced photos <laughs> that I start working larger. I'd done uh, this painting originally uh, as a night scene, and I was, my parents' 50th wedding anniversary came up. I told them they could select a painting out of a show that we'd had. And this was the one my mother decided on taking. And I knew this one would probably sell eventually. I liked it well enough, I thought that might happen. So I decided, well, if that's the case, I'll, I'll repaint it. So I did, I did another canvas, and I was probably three quarters of the way done with it. It was a, pretty much a duplication of the, the first a night scene. And uh, I, my mother changed her mind <laughs> and picked another one. So then I had two of these. I didn't care to continue, so I gave the canvas to Megan and figured she'd just paint over it. And as Megan's ten, she tends to paint over <laughs> canvases three or four times before she's happy with it. And she decided to do uh, a sunrise, correct? A sunrise? Sometimes she'll come over my shoulder and say, you know what would look better? <laughs> And then if you do this, then I go, okay, and then just, uh, maybe I'll do it, and maybe I won't. It'll but. just be a small thing that, you know, is easily correctable. I, I would point out, but not, not very often do I say anything. I, I'm pretty supportive of mm -hmm. what you do. I, I like what she does. It's, it's stimulating and, uh, and sometimes even intimidating <laughs> when I see what she's doing, but it drives me out a little, little more, too. So. Well, my work tends to be a bit of a journal. I, I find that I, I tend to paint sort of as a therapy and, and what I end up painting, um, it's, it just seems like it's, it's very personal to me and something maybe that I wouldn't go and tell people about, but, but I feel more comfortable showing people, you know, here's what's going on in my life right now, but, but I'm probably not going to tell you about it, all right? Originally I started working from photographs um, and eventually kind of graduated into an imaginary portraiture and such. Well, everything I do is, is uh, via my imagination. And this was the night that Jane died is the title. And uh, I've kind of got this interest in, in, in uh, dealing with death. So Jane Mansfield is the subject of the, the piece. And she was killed in 1967, auto accident. Ran into the back of a semi-trailer truck in a fog of some sort. And so uh, this just deals with an imaginary scene, kind of as I, I thought it might have appeared the night she drove out of town. I'm learning to paint. Each time I do something, I'm, I learn a little something new. And that painting took me well over a year to, to draw out and paint. Uh, the perspective is, is on a curve. Everything curves from the center point, like a globe, top of a globe. I've always been interested in art because it was just around my house. Self-portrait, where it's supposed to be. Um, and the background is New York, or it's supposed to be also. I have this Ruth Orkin book that I really like her as a photographer. And um, she's got all of these pictures of New York, and so I've been kind of using that to learn to draw buildings because I never learned to draw buildings. Um, and so that's, that's why I've got New York as the background. I've never even been to New York. I don't like doing something for somebody else. I'm very uncomfortable that way. I like to do exactly what I want to do. Show it, and if somebody likes it enough to purchase it, wow, that's a, that's a real nice thing to have happen. But uh, I do it because I need to. Yeah, there's a George Siegel piece um, that, that I had seen while I was working on my painting. And it started out as a painting of just a, a person. And um, 
I, I didn't have any background for this, and, and I was kind of interested in starting to do backgrounds in my paintings. Um, and I came across this book that I have about George Segal, the sculptor, and um, he has a piece of these two men standing in front of a movie marquee. It came as kind of a surprise. I didn't even realize when I had the piece in the show that they were going to be looking for a piece for the Art of World um, brochures and, and postcards and all. So when I got a call that they were interested in that piece, I was like, oh, okay, <laughs> whatever, you know. Um, it's really exciting. I'm really glad. Uh, Northrop King left 10 years ago, 12 years ago and buildings were empty. I think Minneapolis was going to tear the place down, and then it was just too darn expensive. Everything's concrete here, so. Uh, development company bought it, started putting in studios, and I came in here in uh, December of 96. Uh, place was bad. Spent a lot of time and effort revitalizing this studio itself, and the uh, management company has put in studios over the past three years. Yeah, I think it is. It's not. I like it back here. I like being able to look out the window and just watch traffic. It just feel like you're kind of a part of something, watching people, and it's nice. Wow, it's nice to see uh, a complex like this salvaged is what was being done, and the artist had a lot to do with that. Uh, this place was was a dump yeah. when I came here, and uh, because yeah. I wanted it this way, that's why it's this way. Um, nobody else came in and did that. Uh, about 60 people here, maybe? 65, yeah. Artists and artisans and such. And there isn't a lot of interaction on a daily basis. That we've had Art Attack, and, um, which is just a Northrop King event, and then Art of World, of course, which um, does kind of bring people together. You get to go around and see people's spaces. And, and on a day-to-day -day basis, though, it, you know, people are here at all different times. It's hard to, to meet people. And it's kind of private, too. Um, you close the door. <laughs> yeah. It sets a mood for, for each person. Yeah. For me, I, I like to have the freedom knowing that someone's not going to see me dancing in here <laughs> <laughs> while I'm doing things. Uh. But he, it seems like it's real fresh right now here and that people are excited and there's a momentum going. It's not like a big dead end and, and people are just you know trying to sell something. I think people are still excited about it and, and thinking we might still sell something. <laughs> 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 we hope. <laughs> Yeah. Now we just need people to come in and support, support what's happening here. Uh, it's expensive. Art supplies and such, you know, they're so expensive. Uh, and the people that do this usually don't have a large income. Uh, so it, uh, it's always difficult for people to produce and uh, need that support. Uh, people come in, the audiences come in and, and like the work and they drink the wine and eat the, <laughs> eat the food and have a good time, but, but it really comes down to the fact that it would be nice if people would you know, spend $25, $50, $500 occasionally. Some people can do it. <laughs> it would be nice to do that. Yeah. As I say, I do this for my enjoyment and it's not a hobby. Uh, I hate it when someone says, oh, nice hobby. Yeah, passion. And even that sign seems kind of you know, overblown. It's just I need to do this on a regular basis or I get backed up, kind of like constipation. It's, <laughs> it's, you need to do it in order to feel good. <laughs>